this? Can you come to my school? Do you have a motivational program that you do magic in? And so I told the lady, yes, I do. And so I put together a program called The Magic of Believing in Yourself. Right. And it was all about motivating kids to believe in their self education wise and whatever else they wanted to be and pursue moving forward. Right. And so I put together this program, did it at the school. Next thing you know, it just spread like wildfire. Okay. And other schools started asking me, hey, can you do this at my school? And that's how I end up getting into the school market and doing the kind of like motivational speaking for junior high schools and a few high schools sprinkled in there as well. Hi, thank you so much for joining the Falling for Learning podcast. I am T.D. Blinaw. We have this podcast to help parents and caregivers with having the resources, strategies, and tools needed to make sure that their children are on track for learning and to stay on track for success. Okay, thank you so much for joining us on the Falling for Learning podcast. Today, we have Shakuma Avery. Um, Shakuma is a magician by trade, and he's going to tell you all about his wonderful career. And at the Falling for Learning podcast, of course, we talk about different careers your child might be into. And so he's going to tell you a little bit about himself. Yeah, hey, my name is Shakuma Avery. Uh, you want to tell me where I'm from? Fairbanks, Alaska. Grew up with Taisha here. I uh, <laughs> happen to be in town for work, and uh, we had to jump on this podcast. So this is awesome. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, so my career started at a very young age, pretty much. I always had a fantasy for uh, the magical arts, uh, magic and mentalism and things like that. And it's something I just had a hobby with all my life, pretty much. And later on down the road in my adulthood, it turned into a career. And that's what I do today is represent a bunch of different companies, Fortune 100 and 500 companies on the trade show floor at trade shows and conferences and corporate events and uh, produce entertainment events, entertaining events for them. Cool. All right. So as you as you just heard, we grew up together in Alaska. So Shakuma. Um, and I grew up in the same church right. in Alaska and, um, you know, he knows me as Taisha, but of course I'm known as TD Flynn as the host of the podcast. Um, but we always start with the beginning with our uh, guest is what hooked you into learning as a kid? You kind of talked about a little bit how you love magic and all of that, but, um, was there something else before that or was that the thing that hooked you in? So really... Yeah, this this is deep because, so as you know, I had trouble reading as a kid. Yeah. And uh, you know that whole story, how that starts. And then magic is something that I really loved. And so that allowed me to also become a better learner and a better reader by going to the public library and getting magic books yeah. and <laughs> reading those. In fact, I was so enthralled and thrived in it that I would keep the books longer than I supposed to have kept them. <laughs> and so, but that's really what started my learning and uh, helping me to learn to read better along with, you know, what you know, the tutoring at the church and stuff that also played a major role in me becoming a better reader. But that's really what, what caused me to start reading more was the art of magic. Yeah, so Shakuma definitely, when he was a kid, he would be doing his magic. He would come and just stop us and be like, let me show you my magic trick. Let me show you. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he's been doing that since he was a little kid. And, um, you know, you heard it here. It was something that he was really interested in. And he got books about it and just kept those books, kept reading them, tried them out. So this may be something that can hook your child into learning if you haven't found that hook for them yet. Um, it could be something for them. So you told us about like what hooked you into learning. What can you tell us about like your education journey? Um, you know, you said you had a problem of reading when mm -hmm. you were younger. Can you tell us a little bit about what caused that? Because, you know, the audience would. Like yeah, really, know. it's just like uh, not really being a big deal in my household. Right. 
uh, not having my parents really around to help with that side of things with education. So it wasn't really a big deal. Uh, it was more of a big deal, of course, when I was at school mm -hmm. and was having trouble reading. And of course, other people stepped in to help assist with that so I can become a better reader. But that's that's how it all starts in the household, yeah. you know. So it's very important that parents get involved with their kids' education. That's very important or they will have problems as they move forward if you don't, you know, take care of that at the beginning. Yeah, so it made a difference. Absolutely. Um, so tell us about, like, uh, you know, high school you know what what clicked for you once you start reading better um mm -hmm. and you know your uh education after high school sure excuse me <clears throat> so in high school uh obviously i got better at reading but one of my one of the keys for me in high school was i always ask questions i was never afraid to ask for help okay. and so with the teachers they knew I was that type of student where like, if I didn't get anything, I would ask for help. And that's what made my journey in high school much smoother okay. was actually asking for help. You know what I mean? Whether it was studying for a test or if I didn't understand something or a subject or something I didn't understand, I would simply just ask teachers for help. And then I also had friends that were smart, that could help me too. Mm. And I had friends in school that wouldn't just tell me the answer. Right. They was like, no, here's how to research it. Here's how to go about doing it. You need to learn for yourself. Mm. But that's how it was for me. I just always asked for help. And that's what made me a better student and at the end of the day, a better learner. Okay. Yeah. So... Got through high school. What happened? What What was your What happened after high sure. school? Sure. So, your education. So after high school, I ended up getting a scholarship for basketball, and I went on to a, a school, a JC in Montana, and I played a season there for one year. Once I tore my meniscus, I never went back to school. But that never ended my journey in learning. Hmm. I tell you something. My coach in high in college, I mean, told me something very interesting. He said, listen, with the talent that you have, you necessarily don't need college. Okay. And so I just took that, what he said. I wasn't even mad that he said that uh, because it made me think. And he and I was like, yeah, he was right. So I took that advice mm -hmm. and I just started working towards my entertainment career. So is that the talent he was talking about? Or well, he wasn't talking about basketball. He was talking about... He was about... talking about the magic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So... All right, and so you uh, <coughs> that that ended your career, your education career right. as far as in college. Right. But then, what happened so that obviously you had to learn a lot of skills Correct. for you to be um, a magician the way you are today. So tell us about that learning journey. Sure. So once I got out of high school, I ended up moving to Seattle. I had family there, moved there. And I just started, and I had friends that were in the industry already, okay. and so I would get advice from them how to go out and market myself and get work. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them had books they lent me to learn about marketing myself, okay. so I would dive in there and read and read and do and do and just see what stuck, and whatever stuck, I just kept doing. But again, my learning process never stopped. I kept reading. I kept learning. I was investing in myself if I could, meaning I was going out to the libraries to like Barnes and Nobles at the time, buying marketing books, self-development okay. books and learning how to market myself and just become better at who it is I am and how I could put myself out there in the marketplace. Okay. So tell us about some things that you, you did and you tried as you were developing <coughs> your business. Right. So one of the things, one of the first books I got on marketing was called Guerrilla Marketing. And this was all about really, if you didn't have a lot of money to spend, mm -hmm. it was all about like getting flyers printed up and putting them on people's cars, okay. letting them know about what it is you do. It was all about the pool tabs, putting your phone number right. on there okay. and people would take those. And so I would do things like that. And next thing you know, I was getting not a lot. 
but I realized some of the stuff I was doing was working. So I kept doing it. Okay. And next thing you know, I started getting more and more business and I kept doing the things that were working. And I kept learning about other things that later on will eventually work as well. Okay. So what, so what was the pool tab? Like what was that offer with like when you first started? What would you get paid to do? <laughs> yeah, so one of the first things I started in, I read, I read in actually a marketing book for magicians and entertainers. One of the easiest markets to get into was kids' birthday parties, doing magic at kids' birthday okay. parties. So that's what I would advertise first. Hey, I could do a birthday party for your kids ages five to seven years old. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'll pull a rabbit out of the hat. Okay. The kid will pull a rabbit out of the hat, things like that. Yeah. And that will pique parents' interest. And then it would, they would call me and say, hey, are you available for this day to do my kid's birthday party? And so that's how I would get work. Cool. All right. So, <coughs> Excuse me. No problem. <laughs> So from, from the birthday parties, how did you expand your business from there? So when I was doing birthday parties, I ended up getting in some restaurants where I was doing what they call table hopping. Hello, parents. All across the United States, we have students who don't know how to read well and who don't know how to write well. Now, I'm not here to shame you, but I am here to blame you. If your child is behind, it is partially your responsibility and your fault. That next generation needs to be the one that's telling your story, not other people, not other families, not other races or ethnicities. Your family needs to be able to tell your story. And if your child can't write well, Who's gonna tell your story? I have written two books to help address these issues. It is the Rewrite Method, the Parent and Educator Guide for Getting Middle Schoolers to Fall in Love with Writing, and the Rewrite Method Workbook, the Parent and Educator Action Plan for Getting Middle Schoolers to Fall in Love with Writing. This book gives you step-by-step -step and easy to use and implement activities to make sure that your child not only gets better at writing, but loves to write. Join us for Well-Educated Wednesdays every Wednesday on Instagram Live at Falling for Learning. It is a free parent question and answer session where parents can ask questions, learn about resources, strategies, and tips to make sure their children are on track for learning and stay on track for success. That's every Wednesday on Instagram Live at Falling for Learning. We look forward to seeing you and helping the next generation thrive. And that means a restaurant would hire you to, sometimes if it's a long wait for tables, they'll hire a magician to kind of ease up on that wait time and entertain the people waiting in line. Mm -hmm. So I would do that. And then once people are seated at their tables waiting on their food, I would go table to table and do magic for the families. And one thing about that market was interested is you start getting spin off work, meaning you never know who's going to be in that restaurant. Okay. So it would be corporate people in there. It would be, mm. you know, educators in there. Hey, can you do this at my school for a school assembly? Can you do this at my corporate event for my group? Okay. And so I will get different type of work from the restaurant. Okay. So tell us more about someone asked you to do this at their school, mm -hmm. right? So how did that work out? So one day, uh, the first school I really did when I put together a motivational magic type program. Okay. Okay. was for a junior high school and this happened from the restaurant right i happened to be doing magic in a restaurant and i happened to be talking to an educator and she said hey you're really good at this can you come to my school do you have a motivational program that you do magic in and so i told the lady yes i do and so i put together a program called the magic of believing in yourself Right. And it was all about motivating kids to believe in their self education wise and whatever else they wanted to be and pursue moving forward. Right. And so I put together this program, 
did it at the school. The next thing you know, it just spread like wildfire. Okay. And other schools started asking me, hey, can you do this at my school? And that's how I ended up getting into the school market and doing the kind of like motivational speaking for junior high schools and a few high schools sprinkled in there as well. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's talk a little bit about numbers. Like how much did you charge the school? So at the time, this was early 2000s, I believe I charged the school $750. And at the time, this was still early in my career, building my business. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of money for me then. How much, how long would you be here for $750? So I would do about a 45-minute show. That would be my program, a 45-minute <laughs> show. And that was the perfect time for those kids That's to sit money. through a program for their, yeah. Some people don't get paid $100 <laughs> right, hour, right, $50 right. an hour. <laughs> $50. Right. So yes, this is what we talk about on Falling for Learning. You know, entrepreneurship is also a path to a, a successful career. Um, and of course, the learning doesn't stop. You know, he didn't do like a, you know, a bachelor's degree or whatever, but the learning didn't stop. A lot of trial and error, right? Right, absolutely. Um, how, you know, how long do you think it took you to get, um, you know, more steady income do you feel like to take you from your like beginning going into Seattle to yeah really uh yeah once I started doing stuff like when I started doing more the schools and then branching off into the corporate world it began to get more steady and steady and steady and steady so how many years do you think like two years no it uh yeah probably about maybe three four years okay. until it really like when I really started understanding the marketing side of things okay. and really seeing how you to keep cash flow coming in. And then what I want to point out, one thing I learned too along the way is I started getting 50% deposits, mm. right? Okay. So then I learned about cash flow, keeping cash. So I could have five or six gigs booked in a month, but have all those deposits come in pretty much at one time. So now that I have cash flow and then after the show, obviously I get the remaining 50% of the check. Okay. Yeah. Um. So how did your, you know, you don't do schools anymore. No. So how did you move from schools um, into another market? Market. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty much the same way is because uh, when I was doing the schools, I was also getting corporate events as well. And then I realized as I got older as a human, and then as I got older in my career, I really decided, okay, this is the market that I really want to focus on. Because okay. you are just saying you could be a, you know, a master, you know, what they call it? A jack of all trades. A trade. jack of all trades, a master <laughs> yeah. of none, right? right? So I really wanted to niche down to really one market, and that was the corporate sector, you know what I mean? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we were talking earlier and you want and you told me about how you were growing your business outside of the school. You were you had like a the thing that you did when you gave them certificates. Yeah, so also too, yeah. So I used to do magic classes for kids. Okay. And uh and these classes will be about eight weeks long. So what I wanted to do is get spin off work from the magic class itself. So what I would do is I would just at my house on my home printer, I would go to Office Depot and get these certificates you can print up on. Mm -hmm. And I would give all the kids in my classes certificates saying, hey, you completed this magic course. And the kids love this stuff, like they completed something. Yes. And so I would make all these envelopes for them and put them in the envelopes. But I also would put like a little coupon in the envelope for the parents because the parents are going to see these envelopes. The kids are going to show them what's in them. Yes. And then the kids will give the coupon to their parent saying, hey, book me for their birthday party. And so I would get spin off work from the magic classes from the coupons I put in the, the little envelope for the kids. So it was really, it was, again, it was something I read about and just implemented it for my market. So he's really implementing the things that you're learning right. in, in those books, you know, so you really went out and used it. I think, you know, a lot of marketing majors, you know, could resonate with some of the things that you're doing. Absolutely. And then maybe they even didn't 
you know, execute on some of sure, these things yeah. that you actually executed on. Um, so the corporate jobs, were they coming from the spinoff from the restaurant? Yeah, some of them was, yeah. A no, lot yeah. of them was. A lot of the corporate spinoff stuff was coming on. And then, so one thing about the corporate market sometimes is different sectors in the corporate market. So you got, like, you got hospitality suites, like a cocktail party. Okay. You got trade shows and conferences. And then you just got regular corporate banquets and stuff. And so I noticed over the years, like, if I got hired for a corporate banquet, the following year, most likely, I wouldn't always get booked because they would want to do something, something else. Different. But I okay. found out later on that the corporate trade shows, any given company would do multiple trade shows a year. Mm -hmm. So not only will you get booked for that one trade show, they may book you for three of their trade shows. Mm -hmm. And so that's where that's why I found out, like, oh, okay, this is where the market is. This is why I really need to focus my attention on. Okay. I'm going to ask you, you could say you don't have the tools, but what, like, what's the average pay for like the trade shows? So anybody with the app, like, let me just say annually, you can make six figures in the business if you do it correctly, if you have a good client base. And in this industry, you don't have to have a lot of clients. Mm -hmm. You just have to have the clients that book you, book you more multiple times a year right. so you can make six figures okay yeah all right cool um what tips um because i know that you also are a father mm -hmm. and a husband um what uh tips or strategies can you say for um parents who <clears throat> they may not have their kids may be not sure what they want to do or they're trying to see how they can make sure they're interested in school or what ideas do you have yeah, just, you know, after a while, at a certain age, your kids will be passionate about something. something. And I kind of learned as, so I have a 15-year-old right now and a 12-year-old. So my 15-year-old, she's really into animation, okay. right? So she's kind of looking later on maybe to go to some kind of graphic school. We don't know yet, but that's kind of what she's passionate about mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So one of the keys, I think, is to let them kind of dive into that passion now. And when time comes, you can see if that's something they really want to do and find out early enough about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the other thing is just be as involved as you can with your kids to find out, again, what they're involved in and what they like. Mm. You know, because I believe sometimes you don't always go the direction that, like, the, the, the what you have a passion for, your kid, mm -hmm. they may not always go that direction. They can end up having a passion for something else later on. Right. But you got to let them learn through that. But you have to support them and guide them the best way you can. So okay. that's the advice I would have. All right, cool. Um, so, you know, what uh, do you think as far as, um, what's your advice for like um, <clears throat> parents who are a little bit worried about their kids going into this entrepreneurial route or, you know, not finishing their education? Like what advice or ideas <coughs> do you have for them? If that uh, may be what's happening. Sure. Or, yeah. To be absolutely honest, I absolutely love it because I think we live in the, the world today, the world we live in today, I think entrepreneur, you have to have it mm -hmm. or you have to have some, some open eye about it because I think entrepreneur, when you are entrepreneur, really there's no limit on what you could do, right? Mm -hmm. if, if your kid is passionate about something, let's say they go to college and then they end up wanting to get out of it because they're passionate about something else, you may have to support that and see, but also you have to make sure they're actually passionate about that. And when you, like you explained your daughter, like yeah. she was really passionate about the beauty industry. Yeah, she was. And, but she really dove into it. Really did. Like she wasn't messing around about it. Right. So I think that's the key. If your kid tells you, hey, I really want to do this, then you have to let them explore that and support them as best as you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the key, I think, is to really make sure that's what they're really going to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's my advice on that. Make sure that they're being serious about it. <coughs> right, right. Okay. 
Yeah. And like I said, I want to highlight what you said, like make sure you are involved. So right. you have an idea what, what your kid likes or what they don't like. If you're not really involved, you're not sure. And exactly. try to guide them or to even like point out to them, like you seem to be really good at art or you seem to, you know, cause they may, right. kids don't just all automatically come out all the time and say, you know, I really think I want to, you know, they don't necessarily say it, but you can help point out like you always do this or you seem to be really interested in this but if you're involved you'll know that but if you're not as involved then you may not even know what your kid likes and you may try to steer them towards something that you like that may not be something that they like at all right yeah okay so any like final words or um advice you want to give for for parents whose you know kids may be struggling or they're not sure you know how to support their kid the best they can uh no just uh i wish i had this on my phone is a quote and it's so great it's really i don't have it with me but and it's i forgot the name of it but it was something of this lines like don't yell at your kids before bedtime. Mm. Don't yell at them in the morning. Okay. Give them good energy before at those times. Yes. Despite how they feel, right? Mm-hmm. And then one thing I try to tell myself as a parent is try to understand your kids, right? Because yeah. you know how it is. Like, kids will give you attitude for no particular reason, yes. right? <laughs> and it's like, like, I'm really, even today, I'm trying to understand that, right? Yeah. And as a parent, I'm I'm trying to understand it on the positive side of, like, not lashing back out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> but then ask, like, like, what's up with that? You know what I mean? So really, man, just try to be, like, I know it's tough as parents, but just try to be understanding. Like, we always, they age before yes. we all did that had that attitude too but just try to understand and try man just try to rock with your friends but rock with your kids i mean but don't be their friends mm. be their parent don't ever be their friend be their parent you know what i'm saying that's the real advice i want to give don't be your kids friends be their parents and don't sugarcoat nothing tell them the truth <laughs> tell them the truth that's right <laughs> yeah all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks again. Have a great week. Okay. Thanks again for supporting the Falling for Learning podcast. New episodes go live every Saturday at 5 p.m. You can watch us on youtube.com at Falling for Learning or listen on all major podcast platforms such as Apple, Google, Audible, Spotify, and much more. For more resources, visit fallinginlovewithlearning.com. We really appreciate you. Have a wonderful week.